come over here and crank this one. You can make some chicken feed. Mountain Gateway Museum basically started back in the 1960s as a kind of a local history museum. And then in the 1970s, the state bought it and it has been part of the state's Department of Natural and Cultural Resources ever since. You'll find the Mountain Gateway Museum less than half a mile off I-40 in Old Fort. It's a four-acre site along Mill Creek that helps tell the tales of mountain days gone by. You know, their mission is to, you know, carry on a lot of the, the ways that are being forgotten. We have just started homeschooling and we're starting to look for just more local opportunities to learn about local history, local culture, local heritage. They need to see the pictures, they need to see the spinning wheels and the plows and all those kinds of things. Same way with the water. Nowadays the children go and open the pump or open the faucet to get water and with this they're fascinated with, especially the little bitty ones, they will pump and then run around put their hand in it and it quits. And they can't quite comprehend that they're powering it and if they quit it quits. We're big into education, of course, but really what we try to do here is to preserve, protect, promote, and pass on to future generations the history and the culture of Western North Carolina. They do that by offering various festivals throughout the year, like Pioneer Days with costumed exhibitors and fun activities, music, and food. The rest of the time it relies on exhibits, like those found in the Stone Building. Some of the permanent exhibits that we have are about wildflowers of Western North Carolina and of course those flowers that can be used as medicines as well as foods. We have the exhibit here about a log cabin and what it was like to live in a log cabin. You know, you really didn't have all the different rooms with their single purpose that we're used to today. Other exhibits upstairs include a history of the moonshine industry and that of native animals. From there, more exhibits can be found downstairs. We have a new traveling exhibit that's about African American music. It has a, a sound interactive with that, so you can actually play and, and hear the, the songs and the music, as well as see the pictures and everything that goes with that traveling exhibit. They've also moved two historic log cabins to the property that house events and exhibits. The Morgan Cabin, the one closer to the museum, is what we call our Fiber Arts Cabin. It does have a, a loom in there, so we, we mainly talk about the kind of materials that people use to make their clothing and what the processing was for cotton and wool and flax, which was made into linen. So we do some demonstrations in there about uh, spinning and weaving. And how to dye those fibers using what they could find long before dyes were available. Today, we're dying with maple bark that's been soaking in a bucket of water for a year. Old literature from the 18th century and back says they got purple from rotten maple bark. How our ancestors lived and even thrived generations ago is foreign to most of us today. But fortunately for visitors here, it's on display for everyone to see. If I stop doing what I do and a lot of these people stop doing what they do, then our culture disappears. Especially, I think the children need to have a lot of chances to use their hands, and the grown-ups do. And we call them chores back in the day. Nowadays, kids will do it all day because they think it's fun. I think finding our roots, finding out where we're from, learning to have that connection, learning to know what our community is in order that we can give back to that community and serve it is incredibly important. And so I'm so glad this is here. The Mountain Gateway Museum is at 24 Water Street in Old Fort, and it's open every day except Monday. For more information, give the museum a call at 828-668-9259 or visit them online at mgmnc.org.